I feel like we've got like 75 plants in the house, all on a schedule, all on this, all on that. And this is ones that the kids can touch. This is ones the kids can't touch. This is the ones we talk to. These are the ones we don't. Like it's, <laughs> it's unreal. We're, we're having, either we're bored out of our tree or we're doing the right thing by the plants. I don't know. Right. I was going to say, I was like, of all questions to take back to where I'm like, I'm fascinated. Which plants do you not talk to? <laughs> uh, well, the one we talk to all the time is our money tree. We have a little mantra. We rub the leaves and say, I love money. Money loves me. It flows quickly and easily to me. <laughs> I have a money plant. I'm going to try that today. Yeah, it's and, and, and it works like. I don't know, like, I'm not saying like lottery works, but I'm not, I mean, maybe I just need to buy a ticket and, and see if it'll actually be the case. But I, I, I'm i very happy. It changes my mood big time being, being in a room full of plants. Yeah, it really is good. I actually started a plant column too, just to try and encourage people. I was like, if you're not doing anything, you know, go down your Canadian tire, get a $6 plant of all things, you know, that will improve your day, your days, you know, say hello every morning. You'd be amazed. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I used to think it was crazy because my Mima has a hundred plants in her house. And um, of course I couldn't tell you what they are, but uh, I'm very, very impressed that my wife and I in our, in our thirties here have a green thumb. Cause I've only ever seen like my grandparents get into it, but yet, uh, we're, we're loving it and they're they're proud of us when our grandparents were over I don't know a while back they were very proud of the plants we had in our house so I thought it was a great compliment I had placed in the country vocal spotlight competition as an 11 year old and if because I was second place I got to um, I didn't get the trophy or anything but I still got to play at Big Valley Jamboree so in doing so that was amazing um, and I think my family was just excited not that I got to perform, but that they got free tickets to Big Valley because of it. So I remember we stayed at a bed and breakfast in Bittern Lake, just uh, outside west of, of Camrose, and formed a great friendship there. And year after year after year, I would play that ATB family stage until I was now, you know, in 2006, got a chance to play the main stage. Danny Hooper also brought me up on stage to sing I've Been Everywhere with him in front of, you know, thousands of people. I think I was 12 or 13 too. I recall that too. Yeah, <laughs> those days. Yeah, we spent all the days. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I've seen Danny recently. We're both on a, uh, we're both on a board with uh, McCune University bringing and creating a country music curriculum and uh, using his contacts and my contacts to bring speakers and writers and producers um, for next September or sorry, this upcoming September. Uh, and he and I talked about that vividly. We also talked about uh, backstage. Uh, the first time I was ever on a bus and I was backstage funny. He, I think he had just gone through a divorce at that time. So there, there, there was, there was quite the party uh, on the bus and my eyes were open uh, to that. When my mom found out I was on Danny Hooper's bus, uh, she put Danny Hooper in timeout and I went in timeout for a bit too. <laughs> 